They're making a horseshoe knife right now. Just got a piece in there hot. I got half a horseshoe in here. They get this thing hot. I'm going to stretch it out and make a knife out of it. Where are you from, boss? Well, originally from Russia. Russia. And nice. now from Phoenix. Oh, well, there you go. How do you like the food out here? Well, in Phoenix or in Russia? No, well, the both. I, how do you compare? How do you compare? I mean... Well, it's very similar. We both eat a lot of meat and, you know, veggies, potatoes, big in the Russian kitchen, so, yeah. Whenever I travel, that's the first thing I want to do. Where do the locals eat? I want to eat the local food, you know? Yes. Yeah. We don't eat cockroaches then, though, so. I feel like that's the best way to travel anywhere when you're a hungry traveler, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're interested in the food. I just use a hardy holder to help me straighten this out. See, when you make a horseshoe knife, you want to make sure that it still looks like a horseshoe. So you don't want to hit it so hard when you're flattening it that you flatten that channel. I'll leave that channel in there. All right, so now I'm going to stretch. Get this hot. I'm going to stretch a blade out from there. It's going to stretch out to about that. Usually I can get one in about three heats. It'll start to look like a knife. So do you do anything other than black smithing? Well, I also help maintain some of the buildings here during the off season. But yeah, I'm mostly blacksmith. I teach it on the sides. I have students. I work with the 4-H uh, groups. So I teach 4-H kids how to be blacksmiths. I work with the scouts sometimes. Interesting. Work a lot of farmer festivals, that kind of deal. Usually I do Renaissance Fair this year. I'm not, but usually I do. Time to make a knife. Give it that old heat, beat, repeat. Look how much I stretch just in that one little round. Got two more rounds, it'll start to look like a knife. So how long have you uh, been in Phoenix? Two years. Two years. Welcome, welcome, and man. And 22 in the United States. Nice. Grab his belly out. Make sure the spine doesn't get up too much. More, more like a knife, right? Yep. Now I gotta do a little finger guard. I don't really differentiate the blade from the handle. This little part here, do that with the horn. Not to be confused with getting horny with, that's different. We just use the horn. <laughs> What's the average hardness? Rock walls? Uh, well, it's tricky with these ones. I don't have a rock wall tester. I know this steel is a, this is a, a high carbon, but on the light end of high carbon. Like for example, this will harden, but it won't get so hard that it needs to be tempered. Yeah. So it'll hold an edge, but you don't want to torture it. This kind of knives make good knives. They don't make good screwdrivers.
That tends to be why I make these into small knives, because people will use them more as just a regular knife and not yeah. abuse it. Yeah. That's my go-to drink at home. Uh, tequila and lemonade. It's like two ingredients. Can't go wrong. <laughs> Citrus, tequila. Living in Arizona, you must drink tequila. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the culture. Yeah. You it's like eat. living in Russia, you have to drink yeah. vodka. Exactly. When in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? Yeah. Yeah, in Jamaica, it's Rome, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's tequila. Here's tequila. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila floor. That's what they say, right? Yeah. <laughs> Five tequila will kill you. Yeah. What's the temperature? Well, when the steel glows orange, it's about 2,500 Fahrenheit. I don't know what Celsius. I'm not good with math. That's why I swing hammers. <laughs> <laughs> right. How's it going, guys? You guys having fun? Usually I do a little little picky area at the bottom there. I'm gonna fold that down. Get this nice and hot. Bend that over the side of the end we get that part. Where are you guys from back there? Minnesota. Minnesota? Not the big one, the mini one, right? <laughs> yeah. I figured it'd be called mini pop. I thought you guys were pop people over there. No. no. Well, we get a lot of Minnesotans around here. Minnesotans and uh, people from, from that whole neck of the woods. I know, right? You gotta escape it. I, I come from Massachusetts. I know all about that. I moved here six years ago so I wouldn't have to shovel anymore. <laughs> here today too. You guys met any of them? We got like a whole park full of Albertans. Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Land of the cheese curds. Where I grew up there's a lot of poutine because I grew up right near Canada. So I learned all about cheese curds and how awesome. They got a squeak. They got a squeaker. They're no good. Got that, right? Yeah, I haven't been to Wisconsin yet, but I hear there's a lot of fun little like it there's a lot of like little farmer town areas and yep. a lot of old blacksmith shops need my little hammer for this next part my little baby hammer Horses, you can do all that fun stuff. The train. 
Yeah, I feel like the train makes everyone feel like a big kid, you know? Sometimes I come in on my days off and just ride the train around when they're, riding, when they're running it. You know, for quality control, make sure it's running right. <laughs> Not because I want to put on the engineer hat and go too, too real loud. I would never. You can't blame me if you did. <laughs> First time? Not my first rodeo. Uh, okay. I've been a smithy about 15 years. 15 years. That's mostly, impressive. Mostly blades. You know, I branch out to other little things here and there. Like during Christmas time, I make magic wands in here. Those are super fun. I thought the kids would love them, mostly adults, but I. <laughs> Were you the one that, who made the ring for uh, Lord of the Rings movie? Oh, no, that's what a workshop. Those guys are cool, though. I've met them before at a blade convention. The what a workshop guys are awesome. They're from New Zealand. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to brass coat this handle. So I got this steel real hot. I'll lock it up here in the vise. You see how it's still glowing? You take a brass brush, and you brush it on hot steel, it'll melt off the bristles and stick to the steel. Just like that one right here. I taught this little trick to a furniture maker, and now when he does chairs and tables, he does this to his nails. Puts his nails in a vise, blow torches them, gives them this treatment. Huh. Sends them in, they look like brass headed nails, look like brass nails. Wow. But it must be hot. That's what the girls tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be hot, hot. It's got to be. It doesn't have to be glowing red, but it's got to be close to glowing. So generally what I'll do is I'll take it out while it's red, lock it up, give it a second, and then just start. Like, you'll see when I quench this in a second, you'll hear it. You'll hear it sizzle. And then I'll quench the blade off, but I always got to cool this brass down so it doesn't start to melt off when I uh, heat up the blade to quench it. See how much stuck on it. Let's find out. Yeah. Oh. Ready for wow. Fort, Fort Knox. Alright, isn't that cool? Fits nice in the hand now. This would be a good little belt knife, boot knife. Not bad for a little half a horseshoe, right? <laughs> Get these for free, turn them into 20 30 dollar knives all day. Well. And it goes over here with all the other finished ones. Thank you, sir. Thank you for visiting me, boss. Thank you. Less than 15 minutes from... Uh, From start to finish? Yep. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> 